reach joy. Since joy is a thing which all must say they have experienced, is it therefore found in the memory and recognized whenever the name of a happy life is mentioned? Now I saw the happiness on the face of that priest. His whole body moved with love. His face radiated love. I could tell that this love that he was radiating was happiness and joy. And I wanted it. It was a something I saw. But I don't know how he felt it. And I can't explain how I felt it to others. So the happiness that I felt over receiving God's love into me, I cannot explain it to others. This was complete happiness. And it's, how do you explain it? Now, you know, that was many years ago. And I don't live in that world of happiness anymore but I remember it with great joy. It's in my memory. And it produces a smile on my face when I recall it and tell people about it. Chapter 22. Far be it, Lord, far be it from the heart of your servant who is confessing here to you. Far be it from me to think that I am happy be the joy what it may. For there is a joy which is not given to the ungodly, but to those who love you for your own sake, whose joy is you yourself. And this is the happy life to rejoice in you, of you, for you. This is true joy and there is no other. They who think there is another Seek some other, and not the true joy. Yet their will is not turned except by some semblance of joy. Chapter 23 Is it then not certain that all wish to be happy, inasmuch as they who do not wish to joy in you, which is the only happy life, do not truly desire the happy life. Or do all men desire this, but the flesh strives against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh, so that they cannot do what they wish to do? Do they then settle on that which they can do and are content with that, because they do not desire strongly enough what they cannot do to make them able to do it? For if I ask anyone if he would rather rejoice in truth or in falsehood, he will hesitate a little to say in the truth, as he would to say that he desires to be happy. But a happy life is joy in the truth. For this is rejoicing in you, who are the truth, O God, my light the health of my continents and my God. This happy life all desire, all desire this life, which is the only happy life, for all desire to rejoice in the truth. I have met many with, I have met with many who would deceive others, none who wants to be deceived. And when they love a happy life, which is nothing else than rejoicing in the truth, then they also love the truth, which they would not love if there were not some knowledge of it in their memory. Why then do they not rejoice in it? Why are they not happy? Because they are more strongly occupied with other things, which have more power 
to make them miserable than that which they so dimly remember as to make them happy. For there is yet a little light in men. Let them walk, let them walk, let the darkness, lest the darkness overtake them. But why does truth generate hatred? And why does your servant preaching the truth become their enemy? Since a happy life is loved, which is nothing else but rejoicing in the truth. How is this so unless the truth is loved in such a way that those who love something else want what they love to be the truth? They want what they love to be the truth. And if it's not even desirable by God, they don't they still want it. They want that to be the truth. And Augustine continues, and because they do not want to be deceived, they do not want to be convinced that they are deceived. Therefore, they hate the truth for the sake of the thing they love instead of the truth. And we're experiencing this today where the, the society has so much hatred in it, and they do not love, their hatred is toward those who talk about love. And this is why Augustine puts it right here in this paragraph, is, is they don't want to be wrong. That is why it's so hard to convert a, a, a person away from their religion, is because their religion is part of them, and they don't want that part to be wrong. And right now, now so therefore, when you bring up the truth to them, and, and they're going the other way, they don't want to hear the truth because they already have desired and committed their life to the, to the other. Augustine continues, they love the truth when it enlightens and they hate it when it reproves. Since they would not be deceived, yet would deceive, they love it when it reveals itself to them, but hate it when it reveals them to themselves. Thus the truth shall repay them by exposing those who do not wish to be exposed by it, and yet not revealing itself to them. Thus, thus, yes, thus does the mind of man, blind, sick, foul, and ill-behaved, wish to be hidden, but does not want anything hidden from it. But the very opposite happens. The mind is not hidden from truth, while the truth remains hidden from it. Happy then will it be when without any other distraction it shall rejoice in that sole truth, the capital T, by which all things are new. Twenty-four. See what a space I have covered in my memory in seeking you, O Lord, and have not found you outside it, nor have I found anything concerning you but what I retained in my memory ever since I learned of you. Since I learned of you, I have not forgotten you. Where I found truth, there I found my God, the truth itself. And since I learned this, I have not forgotten it. Thus, since the time I learned of you, you have resided in my memory. There I find you when I call you to remembrance and delight in you. These are my holy delights which you have given me in your mercy, <coughs> being mindful of my poverty. Chapter 25 
But where do you abide in my memory? O oh Lord, where do you abide there? What kind of dwelling place have you made for yourself there? What kind of sanctuary have you built there for yourself? You have given this honor to my memory, to abide in it. But in what part of it do you dwell? That I am pondering. For in thinking of you, I pass beyond such parts of it as the animals have. For I did not find you there among corporal things. And I came to those areas in which I stored the affections of my mind. And I did not find you there. Then I entered into the innermost seat of my mind, which the mind has in my memory, since the mind remembers itself. But you are not there. For as you are not a corporal image, nor the affection of a living thing, as when we rejoice, sympathize with, desire, fear, remember, forget, or the like, so neither are you the mind itself, because you are the Lord God of the mind, and all these things change. But you remain unchangeable over all of them, and yet you have vouchsafed to dwell in my memory ever since I learned of you. So why do I now seek to know the part of my memory in which you dwell, as if there were places in the mind? Assuredly, you dwell in it. I remembered you ever since I learned of you, and since I find you there, when I call you to remembrance. 26. Where then did I find you that I might learn of you? You were not my memory when I learned of you. Where did I find you that I might learn of you but in yourself, above myself? Place there is none. We go backward and forward and there is no place, no location. Everywhere, O oh truth, you hear those who ask counsel of you and answer all of them at once, though they ask your counsel on many different things. You answer them clearly, though they did not all hear clearly. All consult you on whatever they wish, though they do not always hear back what they wish. He is your best servant who looks not so much to hear what he desires, from you as to desire that which he hears from you. That's an important sentence. I'm going to repeat it. He is your best servant who looks not so much to hear what he desires from you as to desire that which he hears from you. In 27. Too late have I loved you, O oh beauty, ancient, ever, yet ever new. Too late have I loved you. And behold, you were within, but I was outside, searching for you there, plunging, deformed amid those fair forms which you had made. You were with me, but I was not with you. Things held me far from you, which unless they were in you, did not exist at all. You called and shouted and, and burst my deafness. You gleamed and shone upon me and chased away my blindness. You breathed fragrant odors on me. And I held back my breath, but now... I pant for you. I tasted and now I hunger and thirst for you. You touched me 
and now I yearn for your peace. Augustine now goes on about sorrow and adversity. Since it's a different subject matter than happiness, I'll, I'll stop here and we'll talk about the sorrow and adversity in the memory next time we meet. So thank you for joining us for Steps in a Journey. I hope, you know, have the desire. Lord, I want you. I want the happiness of you. I want to know you. I want to know all about you. I want to see your face. I want to hear your voice. Lord, I want to love you above all things. Lord, I want to spend eternity with you, getting to know all about you the rest of my life. And we're all traveling together with these desires, with this as we seek eternal life. God bless you.